We are looking live at massive crowds of border crossers being processed by Texas authorities. A bit of perspective on the scale of the crisis that has border agents saying they are simply overwhelmed. Check out the numbers from yesterday. A staggering 4,500 people crossed in the Texas Del Rio sector alone. In Eagle Pass, one Border Patrol agent called it, quote, the worst day we've ever seen. In total, the southern border saw more than 12,000 cross yesterday. And now Texas is taking action. Governor Greg Abbott just signed a law, Texas Senate Bill 4, that empowers local and state law enforcement to arrest people they suspect of crossing the Rio Grande between ports of entry. Meantime, the crisis at the border is a growing concern for everyday Americans. In a new Fox News poll, 34% called it an emergency. 45% say it is a major problem. Just 33% of registered voters approve of President Biden's handling of the crisis. 63% disapprove, raising rightly held concerns among Democrats about the impact on Biden's reelection campaign. Joey, we've been saying for quite some time, every state is a border state. Do you think the Biden campaign will see that? Yeah, I grew up in a border town, uh, Dalton, Georgia, 78% Hispanic, but mostly Mexican immigrants from the 90s and late 2000s. I just spoke with a good friend of mine. I spent 12 of the last 18 days in Texas. A good friend of mine, Eric Kaiser, is police chief down in Jordanton, Texas. He said, listen, people think these are migrants coming to work in fields and factories. They're not. There are people from all over the world coming with criminal records of their own and nefarious intent of their own. And even if it's just 10 percent of the people coming, that's that's way too many for our country to call ourselves safe or to have a, a border. But really, this move by Abbott's really smart because it, it, it's a win win either way. It's either a win for Abbott if for some reason the Biden administration doesn't challenge this, mm -hmm. then Texans say, hey, you took care of me. He sets himself up for a Senate or maybe even presidential run because Texans and Americans go, wow, thanks for taking care of us. Or it's a win if the Biden campaign challenges it because then the Republicans can sell for the next year that the Biden administration, I mean, uh, basically puts more effort and good faith into protecting those that would disobey our laws mm -hmm. than those that have to live by them and are susceptible to those that disobey our laws. And let's focus for a moment those who bear the brunt yeah. of this absolute siege. So last hour you spoke with the National Border Patrol Vice President Art Del Cueto. So let's watch that for a moment. We'll get your thoughts on the other side. He's pretty much nailing it. He's doing what others aren't doing uh, with the inactiveness of this administration, and that's part of the problem. But you know what? It's not just, uh, you know, in Texas. It's happening throughout the entire southwest border. And, you know, you asked me for worst-case scenario. I don't know anymore, Harris, because every single day, it's worse than the day before. Mm. It's just chaotic throughout the whole border. It I get asked. Is our border broken? And I ask back, what border are you talking about? Because I do Ooh. not see a border anymore. The National Border Council represents thousands of people, and Art Del Cueto has been leading them, and he says now they are outnumbered. Oh. In Eagle Pass, for every 200 illegals coming across the border, you have one border agent. Now, you want to talk about morale issues, you can put that in a bucket, but I'm going to talk about safety issues. Uh -huh. And I mean yes for the country, because we don't always know who's coming through with the people that we're even trying to identify, but then there are all the gotaways going around all the checkpoints. And we know so far there have been more than a million of them. But I'm worried about our agents. <coughs> I, I, I want them to have what they need and the support that they need. We need military at the border now. And the president may not be strong enough. He may not have the intestinal fortitude that it would take to put just some, some stopgap at this, in this process. You don't need Congress to give us a little bit of time and to stem this tide. Trump didn't need Congress to do that, would have loved to have it. Have it. They looked at bills. He wanted to get something done. Republicans weren't on board with that. Democrats weren't on board with that. But we have to go forward now. This is a bad situation for the country. And by the way, Del Cueto's right, and you are right too. We just need a win. <laughs> For all the politics, I don't care who's winning in that. The country needs a win in this. And, Tammy, let's talk about impact of Senate Bill 4. So some quipped, but rightly so, well, you need to be, build bigger prisons. The reality, too, is with the thinned ranks, as Harris pointed out, they're not equipped to even process yeah. or put in jail all of these no. people. So at the end of the day, is this about optics? And if so, will this work? What will work? Well, it could be an attempt to get again to the Supreme Court. In 2012, SCOTUS overturned key parts of an Arizona law that was very similar. 
same dynamics, which they said you can't arrest people. The state can't do this because federal law takes precedence. So you can't do that. So it's interesting to see what Abbott's intentions are, that it's not about the Constitution in that context. It's federal law, which Congress can change. Yeah. So these are the kinds of things that we are looking to have happen. And also, part of the bill is about building the wall, et cetera. But I think they know it's going to be challenged, especially because of that SCOTUS a decision mm -hmm. in 12 uh, about Arizona. And Maria, I wanted to get your thoughts on this. So the Biden campaign co-chair, Texas Congresswoman Veronica Escobar, she was talking to Politico about the border, and she said... We have failed over and over again. Mm. I do worry that Democrats will get blamed simply because the president is in the White House. I hope not, <laughs> but I'm afraid of that. It happens to be there. Right. Like right. in the White House. <laughs> right. And then the natural response, as Tammy just said, is frankly, well, the policies are yours. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, look, the Biden team, I think, fully realizes this is, this is both a security issue, uh, a border issue, and a political issue. I think, Tammy, to your point about what Governor Abbott's goal is, I think you hit the nail on the head, Joey, when you said he wants to be a senator or maybe run for president. But look, Congress does have a role to play. They don't have to do everything, Harris, as you said, but we have a Democrat, a Republican, and an Independent right now in Washington working an extra week at the holidays to try and get a deal on immigration because guess what? We can't get Ukraine or Israel funding because Republicans are holding that hostage if we don't get an immigration, something you on immigration like you have done. a problem with that. Something like, you want to uphold somebody do. else's border before you want to uphold no. ours. I, I think that immigration is such an intractable conflict and a political football in our well, country. Well, under the current president, want, it's, it's more intractable. You I know want, why? Because it's more dangerous Paris, than let it's Let me ever finish been. here. I want Israel to get the funding now. I want Ukraine to get the funding now. I don't want Republicans. I want the border to get the funding I want, now. I don't want Republicans <laughs> of Congress who, in this Congress, have had the most ineffective, lazy... You know, Congress that has done nothing, has gotten nothing done except for historically take their speaker out of power, pass no bills, start an impeachment with no evidence, and they can't even get Israel funding because they're fighting some political fight over the border that's never going to be signed into law? Come on, let's be serious here. I think the Senate can do something, you and I think what? they You should. simplify it so much, but let's not forget about the months and months where we didn't get an allocation of all the money that was going to Ukraine. What? And no one is saying that the effort isn't worthy. If this president had given Ukraine what a it needed at the beginning of the war, it's not we wouldn't be sitting a here bunch all of Republicans these days later are saying Ukraine's talking not about worthy. this issue. We That's could have moved true. on. It is true. A bunch of Republicans are saying Ukraine is not worth fighting for anymore. Well, I'm just Terrace Faulkner. I'm not a Americans bunch of anybody. And yeah. the facts bear out that we needed to do more early. But now we need an enumeration of, well, where is all the cash going? And let's look at all of it. What is wrong with that? But in the meantime, why not our border first? Yeah. Which 67% of Americans agree they want funding for the border now. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.